Recently, I've become interested in creating a component called a memristor. Essentially, it is like a resistor or a diode, but it holds a memory of the current that flows through it. This is especially useful in things such as AI or very large-scale parallel computations. And it has been shown to actually be relatively easy to make, as this user from EEV blog showed, using just a piece of copper and sulfur. You can tell that it had memristive effects because if you trace the current and voltage curve in XY mode on an oscilloscope, it makes this sort of figure eight design as shown here. Some of these aren't quite memristive and you can tell something's going on, but for the most part, they have that effect. I also read an article by Sam Zeluf, who was able to also create some memristors but he based them on silicon and sputtered metal, such as titanium dioxide, directly onto the silicon, and those also had memoristive effects. Now, I don't have a sputterer, so instead I bought titanium dioxide. I hope to make a solution with isopropyl alcohol, which would be spreadable on PCBs, but as you'll see later in this video, it didn't have any memoristive effects. Here you can see I already coated the PCBs with the titanium dioxide. It was also dissolved in alcohol to make sure it spread out better and would stick. And I also pre-soldered some wires so that they would be easier to handle. Now I'm going to be heating these up quite a bit because the current state of titanium dioxide that is on them is not actually in the right state for the memories of effects that I want to have. It also isn't supposed to be exposed to oxygen because the oxygen will have a negative effect on its performance. So I wrapped it in aluminum foil to try and get that to not be exposed to oxygen and I heated it on a stove because I did not have my blowtorch with me at the time. Now, as you can see, as I'm tearing this apart, this did not stay together at all. It completely um, made the PCB boards fall apart and it did not hold up well to the heat. So now I place down a completely solid piece of copper, a copper sheet, and now I'm coating it with titanium dioxide. I shake it off and also try to evaporate as much of the alcohol as I can. And now I start heating it above the stove. Now this method is also flawed because it's obviously very exposed to oxygen at this point. Now you can see I'm adding more titanium dioxide, which is uncooked to a new copper PCB layer, which I'll use as a second contact for the memristor for the charge to hopefully flow through the titanium dioxide. And I'm pasting that onto the copper sheet and I'm clamping it down with a binder clip. Now I'm sanding the opposite side of the copper sheet to hopefully expose it enough so that I can solder a new wire onto it. And then I can have two new leads for the memristor. Now, unfortunately, this did not really work out. Um, I wouldn't use titanium dioxide in its raw form. Um, I think you really have to sputter titanium directly onto a surface for it to work well. 
I believe this process to technically be possible, but not only does it require a better substrate, it also should be done in a vacuum chamber and at very high temperatures. So instead I tried the first method I actually researched, which is the copper sulfide method. In order to do this method, you had to essentially try and dissolve sulfur powder into um, an isopropyl alcohol solution. It doesn't really want to dissolve, but just mix it up as much as possible and it should still work. I poured it into this container and missed some of the alcohol. Now here were some of the first attempts. This one was a solid core piece of low gauge wire with another wire wrapped around it to hopefully maximize contact, but this didn't work out super well because unfortunately the coating is very thin and brittle and it would break. So I had to try and think of a different method. This next one used a PCB layer once again. I created the copper sulfide layer and I used a piece of aluminum pressed against the new copper sulfide layer with a piece of Kapton tape as a connected electrode. Unfortunately, this one also did not work very well and was sensitive to even a small bump. And I also wanted to try and make it as expandable as possible because Usually these are used in arrays, and so you want it to be easy to make a whole lot of them and connect them together. And this one is just another test with a copper sheet and a piece of aluminum uh, held on with a binder clip. And here you can see that just rubbing the surface with my thumb, a lot of it just comes straight off. So I needed to think of a better way. I designed some PCBs and I ordered them from JLC PCB. Now, as you can see, these large black PCBs are going to hold many memristors, eight in total. They're also going to be able to attach together top and bottom and side by side so that I can very easily make a matrix out of them. And these blue PCBs are going to actually be the memristors themselves. I'm going to sand off one side of the protective coating. And after that sanded off, I'm going to add a copper sulfide layer to only one half of this piece. The correct way to do this would not have been to order all these pieces from JLC PCB. The correct way would be to use a CNC mill, which unfortunately I didn't have access to at the time, but you can really just crank out all of these and have a copper surface exposed by default instead of having them apply the solder mask and then removing it. Now here you can see that I'm going to be applying Kapton tape to only one half of these. That's because we want the charge to flow into the copper and then through the copper sulfide layer into the copper on the other side. And that way it makes it flow through the entire memristor. Now after I did that, I put them all into a baggie, which I had filled with isopropyl alcohol already. Then I took out the sulfur powder, and I began adding the, a little bit of the sulfur powder to the baggie.
any exposed copper to the sulfur should immediately begin turning slightly black. And about 24 hours later, or at least that is how long I waited, it should be completely black on any exposed copper. I would not leave it in too long because it may completely turn all the copper on that side to copper sulfide, and we do still want a little bit of a copper surface in order to conduct the electricity through. Now I began soldering the bases, which needed pin headers on the top, bottom, left, and right, which are on alternating sides as well so that they can all sit side by side. Now that I have multiple completed, I can attach them in this arrangement where the diagonals are on the same level and they alternate in height. This probably isn't the best way to do it. I could have used some horizontal pin headers, but I was pretty lazy when I was designing these. All of the pins on the top and bottom and left and right connect to each of their corresponding memristors. Now these are what the memristors look like after I've removed them from the sulfur bath. And here is a comparison from each step of the process with the solder mask, the solder mask removed, and the copper sulfide. Now I'm going to be using copper tape, not the sticky side, but folding it onto itself to act as a somewhat uh, springy and cushioned connection for the memristors. This way, hopefully the copper sulfide does not chip away. I would be using something like uh, aluminum foil or something, but for some reason I didn't have access to any at the time, so I was just using copper tape. Now the memristors can be screwed down into the holes that are already in the PCB. I had three holes on each side for the memristor, but you really only needed the one hole on each side because I found that that was enough. Although I did later go back and add washers onto these so that they would be a little more even with the pressure. I only added half of the memristors to each of these boards because I wasn't entirely sure if the process had worked at this time, and so I was going to go through and test each one to make sure there were both no shorts and that the copper sulfide just had a memristive effect in general.
Now attaching two of the PCBs together, this is what they look like. Now I attached a signal generator and an oscilloscope to the memristor. The way to test if it is an actual functioning memristor is by applying an AC signal to the memristor and viewing the current and voltage curve in XY mode on the oscilloscope. If it makes a sort of figure eight shape, then it should be good. Eventually I found settings that worked and this sort of looks like a figure eight shape. Um, it may be difficult to see and it is moving around a bit, but I think that's what it should look like. I later took out this analog oscilloscope, which shows it much better. It's still sort of weird shaped, but I think it's similar enough to the shapes shown in the blog post by Sam Zeluf, and it may be an actual working memorister. Now, currently, I have it at a very low frequency, and when I increase it, this gap sort of opens in the middle. I'm not sure if that's especially supposed to happen, but when I lower it once again, it looks very memoristive. So I think this is at least somewhat a success, though finding a better material may be important. I currently haven't tested the memoristors in a matrix design, but hopefully when I have a reliable and working design that works the same across all memoristors, I will make a matrix out of them and I will try and do some in-memory computation all parallelized. Thanks for watching.